The Embarker wrote an article on May 5th, the coronavirus proves that the Christian God does not exist. And it's on Pathios. Every disgusting, vile thing is on Pathios. Uh, Pathios is the, is the collection device of the collective ignorance of, of anything religious uh, or vile. Um, but it starts off, it's simple logic. The Christian God promises to answer prayer. Prayers to this God are not answered. Therefore, the Christian God does not exist. And now remember, he came out of a charismatic Pentecostal experience, and he quotes all the standard texts. If you ask anything in my name, and then he quotes all the people that are, you know, the Paula Whites and everybody else. So what this illustrates is the need to have a meaningful understanding of the promises of Jesus and the promises of Scripture in regards to what prayer is. So we need to have, I really, I think articles like this are a great opening to be able to present a meaningful response to this type of objection. But I, again, I'm going to get people mad by saying this, but I, I, only, I can only see how Reformed people can provide a meaningful response. Because what is the fundamental response to what Dan Barker is saying? You don't understand the role of prayer. Prayer says that it will change things, that God will act in accordance to your prayers. No, it speaks of people praying to God who are righteous, and it speaks of people praying to God who are submitted to his will. And so submission to the will of God means that your prayers will be in accordance with the will of God. You're not praying to fulfill your own desires. You're not praying to fulfill your own uh, lusts or anything else. You're not Kenneth Copeland. You're not the name it and claim it people. And a person in subjection to God and desirous to fulfill his will will accept the will of God when it is God's will, as it was between 1347 and 1350, to wipe out about half the world's population. Now, we don't know how it impacted other parts of the world. There are probably parts of the world that didn't, didn't experience it, but they weren't very uh, populated parts of the world. Um, the most heavily populated parts of the world were devastated and people were praying all the time. And there is nothing in scripture that says that God cannot work his will and man can do anything, do acts of charity or fastings or anything else. God's still going to accomplish his will. And if we are submissive to that will, then our prayers will be in light of that. But there is to, to say, and unfortunately, the reason that this type of argumentation works is because people have made it so many times. Uh, but to say that there is some type of a blank check in Scripture where, in essence, we tell God what to do. We, if your prayers are based upon the assumption that you need to convince God to be better than he is, you've totally missed the point. You've totally missed the nature of revelation. You've totally missed the nature of the God of Scripture. That's not why we do what we do. Now, Dan Barker is an apostate and um, seems to be a reprobate apostate. I mean, we can pray for him, but man, it does seem that if anyone ever fulfills the picture and the biblical picture of Hebrews 6, it would, be, it would be someone like Dan Barker. Could he know better? Of course. Uh, have I ever seen any evidence Dan Barker actually wants to accurately represent the other side in, and, and recognize category differences? Like, no, no, no. No, and in fact, my experience is once people proclaim themselves to be experts, as almost every apostate does, then they just start throwing all Christians into the same category. And that's pretty much the end of that. So, so there you go.